everyone, my name is Lorraine Graziani. I hold a PhD in law and a Master of Advanced Studies in Children's Rights. I focus my research on access to justice for children and child-friendly justice. In parallel with my academic work, I have undertaken several child protection and participation projects. I'm currently working as a justice and child protection expert in Burkina Faso. Today, I will speak about access to justice for girls, victims of sexual violence. Girls are defined as any female below 18 years old. After discussing the importance of their right to remedy and its limits, we will look at how to address those obstacles. Sexual violence against girls is a global issue UNICEF studies show that 700 million women were married before 18. One girl in 10 have experienced forced sexual acts. Millions of girls have undergone female genital mutilation. Data also shows that violence is higher among vulnerable groups. Certain characteristics such as sexual orientation, disability or ethnicity and some con contextual factors such as humanitarian crisis, conflict or post-conflict situation may increase their vulnerability. But their vulnerability is in large part a product of the influence of gender-based power relations within society. The World Report on Violence Against Children highlighted that girls are more exposed to sexual violence than boys. Girls are also at greater risk of human trafficking and prostitution, violence in school or on the internet. Most of the time, girls are abused by their partners members of their family or neighbors, teachers, or any other person responsible for their security. For instance, hundreds of girls were sexually abused by peacekeepers in Central African Republic. The right to remedy is a fundamental right protected by the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. The CRC committee also stressed that judicial remedies should be accessible and adapted for all children. Thus, girls victims of sexual abuse should also have the possibility to access justice. But in general, they face many obstacles. They often do not know their rights and do not have legal assistance. They also fear stigma, shame and reprisals on the part of the perpetrator. They are not able to cover the cost and are not supported by highly skilled professionals. Improving access to justice for girls victims of se sexual violence is a challenge. Since children have rights, they should also have the possibility to access justice in case of violation of their rights. The adoption of the CRC 25 years ago had an important impact on the evolution of the status of the child. The CRC encouraged the development of a new conception of childhood. Children are not only seen as vulnerable persons in need of protection, but they also have the right to participate and exercise their rights. Despite this evolution, children often need to be represented by legal representatives. Indeed, the principle of legal incapacity is still a major obstacle for children to access national courts. However, the development of international human rights protection mechanism offers a real opportunity for victims to compel states to comply with their obligations 
to redress violation and obtain compensation. Most of those mechanisms allow children or their representatives and some of them NGO to act upon violation of their rights. Most of the cases concerning girls victim of sexual violence were brought before the European Court, the Inter-American Court of Human Rights and the Inter-American Commission on Human Rights, but also before the Committee on the Elimination of Discrimination Against Women, the CEDAW Committee. The European Court was the first international body to recognize that children, as any other victims, are allowed to bring complaints before the court. One of the first complaints was brought by a father and his daughter, a 16 year old girl, mentally handicapped. She was living in a privately run home and was sexually abused by the son-in-law of the director but was not able to obtain reparation before the Dutch courts. Since then, the European also dealt with other cases concerning sexual abuses among the families or in detentions. Judges and experts paid particular attention to victims of sexual violence. For instance, in TPV on behalf of LC against Peru, a teenager was sexually abused and attempted suicide. Despite the fact that therapeutic abortion is legal in Peru, the hospital refused to perform an abortion on the basis that it posed a risk to the pregnancy. Thus, the CEDAW committee noted that the state failed to protect her physical and mental health, but also her private and family life. Judges and experts also recognized that girls, victims of sexual violence, should be able to access justice whenever and wherever it happens. In O'Keefe against Ireland, for instance, the applicant was sexually abused by the school principal while studying in a Catholic school in the 70s. Judges concluded that victims should obtain recognition and compensation for the state failure to protect her even though it happened 25 years late, earlier. Girls also experience sexual violence in times of conflict and emergency, such after the earthquake in Haiti, where women and girls living in camps for internally displaced persons were victims of sexual abuse. International criminal courts highlighted the importance to reinforce the protection of girls victims of sexual violence. Indeed, in case of and conflict, girls are often seen as easy targets. Despite significant progress, access to justice is still limited for girls victims of sexual violence. The lack of investigation and the failure to prosecute perpetrators was highlighted in several cases. For instance, in the Cottonfield case, in which one, three young women included two minors, were sexually abused and murdered. The Inter-American Court of Human Rights recognized that the state failed to comply with its obligation to investigate and violated the rights of the victims to access justice and to obtain judicial protection. We have seen that for several reasons, girls victims of sexual abuse are generally not able to exercise their right to remedy and face many obstacles. Thus, we will now discuss ways to overcome those obstacles. In general, access to justice for victims of sexual abuse is limited because of political, socio-economic or cultural reasons. But children often face additional obstacles. 
The CRC committee highlighted that children's special and dependent status creates real difficulties for them in pursuing remedies for breaches of their rights. Other barriers may also be underlined. First, the complexity of justice systems makes them difficult to understand for children who are often unaware of their rights and the existence of services. Furthermore, the justice system is often intimidating for children. Thus, for several reasons, girls victims of sexual violence are generally not able to exercise their right to remedy. We will now discuss ways to overcome those obstacles that girls victims of sexual violence may face in their quest for justice. First, victims of sexual abuse should have the right to information and assistance. The Secretary General of the United Nations highlighted that all children should be enabled to claim their rights through legal and other services such as child rights education or advice and support from adults. Different sources of information should be available. The role of media is highlighted in Article 17 of the CRC, but parents, teachers, siblings and friends are also important sources of information. Experts also point out that material should be available in police station, health centre and in schools. But information should also be appropriate. Documents should be written in the child-friendly language, taking into account children's age and maturity, as well as differences in culture and gender. The Special Representative on Violence Against Children stressed that materials should be developed in collaboration with children to ensure that they are able to understand them. Children also need to be assisted and supporting during the legal process. Depending on their needs, victims may receive different types of assistance, such as psychosocial, financial or legal support, including free legal aid. Being assisted by a lawyer at the outset of the legal process is a fundamental right recognized in the international human rights treaties and the Convention on the Rights of the Child. Indeed, lawyers play an important role in keeping children well informed, defending their rights and best interests. As with other professionals working with children, they should receive regular and interdisciplinary training to be able to adapt to the capacity of the child and communicate with them in an appropriate way. Then, it is important to highlight the importance of strategic litigation and the role played by NGO and civil society actors in the defense of girls victims of sexual violence. NGOs and civil society actors first have the possibility to submit written statements. For example, Amnesty International in Aydin against Turkey submitted written statement in support of a Turkish girl who was raped while in detention. The NGO affirmed that rape of a female detainee by an agent of the state for purposes such as the extraction of information or confessions or the humiliation, punishment or intimidation of the victim was considered to be an act of torture under current interpretation of international human rights standards. NGOs and civil society actors are particularly active in the inter-American system. In 2010, several organizations and human rights centers filled a petition for precautionary measures. NGOs and civil society actors may also bring petition before the African Committee of Experts on the Right and Welfare of the Child.
but also before the European Committee on Social Rights. Indeed, the particular attention needs to be paid to collective actions, as they have many advantages. Several victims are represented at the same time and they do not have to bear the burden of the proceeding. Unfortunately, the collective procedure was not included in the final version of the CRC protocol. The creation of a new complaint mechanism before the Committee on the Right of the Child is a sign of my major progress. In conclusion, we can say that as of today, international and regional mechanism offer the best judicial protection for girls victims of sexual violence. As any other children and human beings, girls victims of sexual violence should have the possibility to claim redress. However, they often face important obstacles and could not act without being supported by adults and professionals. They need to be adequately informed, assisted by highly skilled professionals. The recognition of the legal capacity of the child might, might encourage states all over the globe to allow girls victim of sexual violence, their representative and children's rights defenders to submit complaints. The CRC committee will have the opportunity to examine the first complaints in the next months, including cases concerning girls victims of sexual violence. Thank you very much for your attention.